Hey friends, welcome back to the Chris Chow Show, where every week I break down the most important business news in Australia and around the world. This week, we have Airtasker going public, Microsoft potentially buying Discord for $10 billion, an Aussie startup being valued at $3 billion, and a New Zealand retirement fund jumping into Bitcoin. But before we get started, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. So on Tuesday, Airtasker listed on the ASX for 65 cents per share. At the end of the week, it closed up at $1.43. So you've probably seen Airtasker's quirky ads on TV, but if you haven't heard of them, the nine-year-old tech company is an online marketplace for a variety of different tasks. Airtasker currently operates in Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, UK, and Ireland. They've said that they're going to use the money raised from the IPO to expand into the US. Some of the tasks available on Airtasker include cleaning, painting, gardening, and even assembling that annoying IKEA furniture that you've just bought. Customers can post tasks on the website for free, and they can set the time, budget, and scope themselves. The people who help with these tasks are called taskers, and they can respond to a variety of different tasks, and they can even negotiate the price. Like other gig economy companies such as Uber Eats or Deliveroo, taskers have a public profile that users can see, and it'll show a variety of different reviews as well as a rating out of five. So how does Airtasker make money? Well, they act as a middleman, and they take a service fee which can range from 10 all the way up to 20% of the task price. My key takeaway from this is that online marketplaces like Airtasker take a while to build because you have to create demand for the service while attracting service providers at the same time. But once a marketplace is up and running, it can usually generate a steady stream of revenue as it takes a small cut of each transaction that happens on the platform. According to Bloomberg, tech giant Microsoft is in talks to purchase Discord for 13 billion Australian dollars. If you haven't heard of Discord, I'm going to guess it's probably because you're not a gamer. The communication app is very popular with the gaming community and especially so with streamers. The free app lets users communicate via voice, text and video and it currently has 100 million monthly users. You can think of Discord like Slack, but for non-work activities. So instead of a Slack workspace, Discord uses the term server, and each server has different channels. You can have a channel for food, you can have a channel for gaming, you can have a channel for books. Many famous content creators such as Pokimane and MrBeast have their own dedicated server set up for their fans. Some creators have restricted channels that are exclusive to their paid subscribers. So if you're subscribed to Pokemon on Twitch, then you can access that channel. My key takeaway from this is that Microsoft buying Discord will make a lot of sense. This is a Microsoft's first rodeo in the gaming industry. Not only do they own Xbox, they also have purchased a variety of game developers. For example, Microsoft purchased ZeniMax Media, the developers behind games such as Doom and Elder Scrolls for 9.8 billion Australian dollars. And back in 2014, they purchased Mojang, the company that created Minecraft. Purchasing Discord would further solidify Microsoft's position in the global gaming market, which is set to reach 300 billion Australian dollars by 2025. Aussie fintech startup Air Wallets has received $131 million in funding from investors, valuing the company at $3.3 billion Australian dollars. The investors for this round include ANZI, which is ANZ Bank's venture capital arm, and Grok Ventures, which is the personal fund of Alassian co-founder Mike Cannon Brooks. Let's break down what Air Wallets actually does. The company makes international payment products for businesses that operate cross-border. Right now, their current offerings include foreign currency accounts, multi-currency debit cards, and international money transfers. These products allow companies to accept and manage international payments, as well as manage their foreign currency risk. And according to Air Wallets, they are significantly cheaper than the big four banks. In fact, if a business makes $100,000 in international transactions, they can save up to 4.1K by using Air Wallets' services. My key takeaway from this is that Air Wallets has a very good chance of becoming a fintech juggernaut. It's already attracted an all-star cast of investors, including Squarepeg, Sequoia Capital, 
Salesforce, and MasterCard. And thanks to the power of the internet, more and more businesses will continue to expand globally, which means they'll need ability to have international transactions and payments. Airwallex is well positioned to be the go-to provider for this situation. And in this week's crypto corner, we have a New Zealand wealth management fund called NZ Funds Management announcing that they're putting 5% of their Kiwi Saver growth fund into Bitcoin. Wait, what's a Kiwi Saver? Kiwi Saver is New Zealand's retirement savings scheme. It's the equivalent of the superannuation here in Australia or the 401k in the US. NZ Funds Management's chief investment officer. James Grigor expects that within five years, Bitcoin will feature in many more KiwiSaver schemes. He said that if you are happy to invest in gold, you can't really discount Bitcoin. But rival KiwiSaver providers have said that it is still a speculative asset. Then putting KiwiSaver money into Bitcoin is more like gambling than investing. My key takeaway from this is kudos to the NZ Management Funds team for taking this brave step. If Bitcoin does continue to increase in value and price, this could be a huge win for NZ Funds Management and potentially result in a substantial return. By being the first KiwiSaver provider to do so, they can potentially attract new customers who also believe in Bitcoin. And by limiting the allocation to only 5%, if Bitcoin does in fact crash, the other investments in the fund should make up for any losses. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments down below if there's any business news that you found interesting this week. As always, an important disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. This video and my channel is for general information only. 